Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net, and welcome to the very first 3D Studio Max tutorial. And today we're going to take a look at creating some 3D text with a seamless backdrop. Now, of course, this tutorial can translate across pretty much any 3D software out there. Now, you have Maya, Cinema 4D, Blender, and this one and that one, but we're going to use 3D Studio Max. You know why? Because I'm pretty good at 3D Studio Max, and the other ones, you might see me fumbling around, you know, trying to find where things are. It's kind of like knowing two languages and not, you know, knowing which word to say. Well, it's not like that at all. Basically, I don't want to embarrass myself, you know, running through the menus, trying to find stuff. I don't want to look like a fool. So here we are in 3D Max. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's sort of the final result. And basically, we're creating a backdrop that doesn't have a seam, but that's going to cover up the entire background. And we're also going to create some nice 3D text. So let's go ahead and reset the scene. And so here is 3D Studio Max at the default level. And of course, this should look similar. Although if you're in Cinema 4D, the perspective view is on the top left, so don't be confused. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. What I'm gonna do is go to my Create panel and I'm gonna create a plane, which is a flat surface, and draw it out in the viewport. And then I'm gonna to go to the Modifier panel, choose the Modifier Bend. And the modifiers are much like effects or plugins, except they affect the mesh, and you can, of course, edit them as needed. So what we're gonna do is set the axis to X. And now if we change the angle down, you can see we're sort of creating like a ramp, you know, like a bicycle ramp or a rollerblade ramp or a skateboarding ramp, whatever you're into, you know, if you just want a ramp for rolling watermelons down, you know, whatever. Um, but we're gonna just kind of increase it. Now remember, we only want the ramp to go up on one side. So we're gonna limit the effect and then bring the limit for the upper up. And we want to bring it up a lot. And you're going to see it sort of unfolds. So that's what we want. Now, here's the problem. It's kind of a sharp edge there. And that's a problem. But if we go back to the plane, remember, this is non-destructive. And then we can increase the width segments, which will smooth out the, uh, the effect there. So, you know, just Give it as much as you need, but no more than you need, and that way you can have a nice smooth ramp. Okay, so that's how we create the seamless backdrop. And we sort of come in here, and it's looking good. And then, you know, of course, we can right click and choose scale, and, you know, extend it out as, as needed. See how that works. But, okay, so. What I'm going to do is then go to my Create palette, and I'm going to click on the Shapes, and we're going to click on Text. I'm just going to click in the viewport, and it creates sort of an outline of text with no real renderability yet. And we'll just change this to 3D Text, bring the size down a little bit, and we can sort of zoom in here. And then I'm going to right click and uh, we'll rotate this and we turn on the sort of the, uh, you know, snap to rotate and then we, so when we rotate it, we can get it exactly 90 degrees and then rotate it up at exactly 90 degrees. And then I'm going to select the text, go back to the modified tab, we'll type in, uh, let's see, Arial Black and uh, that's a good size. Now. The text doesn't have any 3D attributes. So we'll select the shape. And here's some cool things. You can select objects, right click, and hide them, and sort of work on things uh, individually. So I'm going to go to the modifier palette and choose bevel. And that immediately adds a plane. Now, how the bevel works, we'll skip this first set of stuff. We'll come right down here to the level one. And that's 
level one. And if we kind of get in close, we can see this better. Level two adds another level, and then you can sort of bevel it, say negative 0.5. So that way you kind of create some cool text. Now you can add another level for whatever reason, um, and also create some very interesting text that way. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at two levels. And what I like to do is select the text, hold down shift, and sort of make a copy. And uh, you can do that, obviously, I'm sure, by just copy pasting and other, other applications. And then what we're going to do is just move it just behind it and overlap it just a little bit. And then we'll come back to the bevel options here. We'll shut off level 2 and level 3. And we'll change the start outline so that it's larger than the original mesh. Now, because it's kind of small, we're losing some of the uh, planes here. And you can just check the keep lines from crossing. And that usually uh, does the trick there. Or you can just you know, limit how much the outline you know, takes up. So I'm liking this purple text, but uh, I think we can create something a little bit better. Now, we're going to bring up our materials. And if we hit the letter M, brings up our materials. I'm sure you'll figure it out for your other applications. Now, there's some presets in here. Um, I'll go ahead and just use the presets because I don't really want to get too much into materials today. But I'm going to click on Standard. And I'm going to click on Material Library. And there should be one in here for Chrome. So we'll come down here, Metal Chrome. And we'll click on that. And we'll drag that out to the text that's in front. And then I'm going to just edit this material. And we're going to make it sort of dark gray. And now the diffuse and ambient, those colors are usually locked, and that's OK. And we'll go and increase the specular level so that it sort of has a little bit of a highlight. And we'll apply that to the background. And so now, if we just quickly render this out, hit the uh, teapot, see we've got some, uh, some, some 3D text there. Now the background's black, and we can change that from the environment, and we just uh, you know, change it and uh, render it out, and then we can see it a little bit better. Now our gray text is a little gray, Let's make it a little darker. So, pretty good. Now, let's go and right click, unhide all. And so now our backdrop is back in the scene. Now our text is sort of going below the backdrop. And so what we'll do is go to the left view here. And uh, we'll select both of the objects. Um, you know, hold down shift or control. And uh, we'll just move it up so that they're inside of the mesh there. That looks good. And now let's add a color to our backdrop. So I'll hit M, bring up the materials again. And I'll just take this gray material and apply it. And then we'll frame, frame this up. Let's see. Of course we can scale this and have a larger seamless background. So now I'm just positioning that and I'm gonna hit render. And so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and select the outline text and increase the outline to 0.75. I kinda of like it to be a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna go and move these up again. So that looks good. Um, now let's add some lights. So go back to the create palette, go to the lights, and everyone has you know omni lights and things, but I'm gonna make it simple and we're just gonna use a skylight. And this may show up as global illumination. Um, you know, we could use mental ray and things, but just to keep it simple, a skylight is sort of just like a global light that casts shadows. And uh, we'll click on the cast shadows, and we'll turn the samples down, maybe 6, and the ray bias to 1. Now, the samples means 
essentially the quality. So the higher, the more quality, but the lower, the faster you'll render. So sometimes you want to render fast to be able to see that everything's looking okay, and then up it for a final render. But we'll go ahead and click on render. Okay, not too bad. As you can see, we have a nice soft shadow under our 3D text. And we can even create a camera. The cool thing about Max is from a perspective view, so a view that's not like a front or a top or a left view, but a, an actual camera view, you can choose view, create camera from view. And then it changes into a camera that we can now animate. So I didn't really want to get too detailed into this, but turn on the auto key. We'll move forward and we'll just uh, move the camera and then turn off the auto key. And then uh, I'll just click on the uh, orbit tool and we'll just place it, you know, center it on the text and uh, bring it down a little bit. And that should stay animated. Now, let's go and render this out so we can import into, say, Adobe After Effects. See, I tied all that together. And we'll click on the Render Settings, and we'll set a range from 0 to, say, 75, or the length of the animation. And you can come down here to the stopwatch, or whatever that is, and increase the length of your animation if you need to. Um, and uh, I'll show you this, too. The Track View. This little button here will bring up the animation curve for items that are animated that are selected. So you could edit, you know, any of the parameters and stuff. So try to give you a little bit of information if you don't already have some basic, uh, you know, understanding of 3D. Um, yeah, back to the render settings here, and we'll go ahead and just use one of the presets, uh, NTSC DV, and then if we come down, we can save the file click on files. I like to save a PNG, um, but you also are going to look into the RLA or the RPF if you're looking to kind of bring in some of the camera data. Um, but we'll go ahead and just use a PNG and we'll just click save and then I'll click on our skylight, go to the modify and I'll turn our samples up to like 15 and I'll render this out and it should look pretty good. So let's go and render that out and uh, hopefully I can go take a break. Okay, so here's our render of our 3D text and uh, you know, pretty simple technique and I'm sure you can use it for a lot of things. Anyway, I'm Andrew Kramer and we'll see you guys next time.